Hello chemistry students. In this podcast we're going to learn how to figure out limiting reactants. If you watched the uh, Bergman and Sam's podcast, the way they do limiting reactant problems is to simply do a full stoichiometry problem for both amounts and then pick the one that's the smallest. Now for some of you that may seem like an awful lot of work and actually I have a different way of doing it here that's a little bit shorter that you might like better. So let's try this example here and I'll show you my way of doing limiting reactants. If you don't like my way you might be able to find some other teachers that have come up with some different ways of doing limiting reactants and you may prefer those. It really doesn't matter how you do them as long as you always show all your work and label everything. Alright, so here we go. We've got 20 grams of NaOH, and that's reacting with 30 grams of H2SO4. Which reactant is limiting, and how many grams of sodium sulfate would form? Well, we need a balanced chemical equation. Okay, so we've got NaOH, and that's reacting with H2SO4, and we know our product is going to be Na2SO4. There's also going to be some water. We don't really care about that because that's not really um, in our problem, but we do need it to balance the equation. So I've got two sodium here, so I'm going to need a two in front of my NaOH, and then to balance the entire equation, I need a two in front of H2O. Now, with this method, you're going to take your grams and you're going to change them into moles. So you've got 20 grams of sodium hydroxide, and you've got 30 grams of H2SO4 or sulfuric acid, you're also trying to find out the grams of sodium sulfate that would form. The idea here is to figure out which reactant is limiting and then just use that to figure out the grams of sodium sulfate. Also notice I've got a 2 to 1 mole ratio. For every 2 moles of sodium hydroxide, I'm going to need 1 mole of sulfuric acid. My amounts are in grams, however, so in order to compare the mole ratios, I need to change my grams into moles. So that's the first thing we need to do. So we're going to change 20.00 grams of sodium hydroxide into moles. The way we do that is by dividing by the formula mass. The formula mass of sodium hydroxide is 40.00 grams. I'm going to set it up like railroad tracks so that those of you that use dimensional analysis can see how this looks. You don't have to set it up like this. You could just say 20 over 40 equals so many uh, moles. That's fine. So this is going to come out to 0.5. Now we have four sig figs, so we have to carry those through. So we have 0 0.5000 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the sulfuric acid. I've got 30.00 grams H2SO4 and I need to change that into moles by dividing by the formula mass of sulfuric acid. The formula mass is 98.09 grams in one mole. Alright, so that comes out to 0 0.3058 now this one's pretty easy to see. Notice my mole ratio is for every two moles of sodium hydroxide, I need one mole of sulfuric acid. In other words, the amount of sulfuric acid in moles is half of what the sodium hydroxide moles is. I've got 0.5 moles here. Half of that is 0.25. So obviously I have more than enough at 0.3. 058. That means this is the one that's limiting. Now let's say it wasn't so obvious. There is a way to calculate it. Here's what you would do. You would take your 0.5 moles of sodium hydroxide and then you would set up I need to put the word moles in there. Uh, then you would set up a little dimensional analysis problem using the mole ratio. So you're going to say for every two moles NaOH I need one mole H2SO4. So this technique works well when you have odd coefficients. Let's say we had a 3 and a 7 or something silly like that. 
we could use this step then to figure out how many moles of H2SO4 are needed. So 0 0.5000 divided by 2 is 0.25 moles H2SO4 needed. That's how much I need. This is how much I have. The amount I need is less than what I have, so therefore we call this the excess reactant. It, we've got more than enough here compared to that 0.25 needed. Now we still have to figure out the grams of product. How do we do that? Well, we just do a basic stoichiometry problem. But which amount do we use? We always use the amount of limiting reactant. That's what a limiting reactant does. It limits the amount of product that you can form. So you always have to begin with that. Now I already have it in moles, so that will help me save a step when I do my stoichiometry. So I'm going to start with 0 0.5000 moles of NaOH. And now I'm going to do a little dimensional analysis. Um, for every 2 moles of NaOH, I'm going to get 1 mole of Na2SO4, that's my mole ratio, reactant to product. Now I need this in grams, so I need a formula mass. So I'm going to put one mole Na2SO4 on the bottom, and then I have to calculate a formula mass for Na2SO4. Fortunately I've already done that for you, so it's 142.05 grams. Okay, so we just do the math here, 0.5 times 142.05, divide that by 2. How many sig figs are there? 4. So that's going to be 35.50 grams Na2SO4. So that's how much product we're going to form from our limiting reactant. Let's try another one. If 6 moles of HCl react with 2 moles of zinc, how many moles of hydrogen gas will be produced? Alright, let's label our balanced equation here. We have 6 moles of HCl, and we have 2 moles of zinc, and we want to figure out the moles of hydrogen gas. Now, notice this problem is a little different. My given amounts are already in moles, so I can skip that first step where I have to change grams into moles. What I see a lot of students do with these problems is they sit there and change their moles to grams, and they don't need to do that. It's, it's a total waste of time. So if your amounts are already in moles, you're all ready to go and check out that mole ratio. Notice it's 2 moles of HCl for 1 mole of zinc. I need half the amount of zinc compared to HCl. I have 6, half of 6 would be 3. I have 2. 3 is needed. I don't have enough. I only have 2 moles. So therefore my zinc is my limiting reactant. Now if it's not that obvious to you, you could set up a little dimensional analysis. You could say 6 moles of HCl times for every 2 moles HCl, I need 1 mole of zinc, and therefore 3 moles of zinc, 6 divided by 2, are needed. I have 2. It's not enough. Therefore the zinc is limiting. Now, how many moles of hydrogen gas am I going to make? I have to start with the limiting reactant. I've got 2 moles of zinc. It's a 1 to 1 mole ratio. 1 mole of zinc will give me 1 mole of hydrogen. So this is pretty easy. It's just 2 times 1. So I'm going to get 2 moles of hydrogen gas from that reaction. And that's my final answer. So when you're already given quantities of moles, it's really easy. You just use the mole ratio to figure out which substance is limiting, and then use that to calculate the product. If we had to figure out the grams of hydrogen, all we would need to do then is multiply this 2 times the mass of uh, H2 per mole. So that would be just one extra step that we'd have to do. 
So there's how you do limiting reactants, and we'll see you in class.